All right, we're going to get going here, folks. I'm Phil Coletti. I'm a product manager here at Snowflake, and I work on hybrid tables and the Unistore workload. And I'm really excited that I'm going to be joined on stage here today by Christoph and Mike, who are going to share a bit about the journey that they've been on with Northern Trust and Siemens partnering with us on developing Unistore for Snowflake. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to zoom through a really quick overview of where we're going with Unistore at Snowflake. And then we're going to spend the majority of our time getting a bit more into the weeds. I'll start with a demo. We'll do a live demo. We'll build a, a lightweight application together using Streamlit and Unistore. And then I'm going to hand it over to Christoph and Mike, who are going to talk you through how Siemens and Northern Trust are solving real world problems with Unistore in their organizations. All right, let's jump in. So for the longest time, transactional and analytical databases have been separate. They store and process data in different ways. Snowflake was born focusing on the OLAP side of that picture, where we leveraged the power of cloud infrastructure to simplify our customers' data warehousing workloads. Since then, we've expanded the scope and become a much more broad, fully featured data platform. We work with a lot of customers that want to construct a complete view of all of their data inside Snowflake. And today that means bringing together data from a lot of different source, transactional, and operational systems and bringing that into Snowflake. This approach introduces challenges, right? Data platform and engineering teams have to learn and manage multiple systems. Juggling redundant data sets makes it difficult to maintain consistent security and governance. And moving data between systems adds latency, which is a barrier for developers that want to access the freshest operational data and combine it with all of that historical analytical data that already lives inside their Snowflake data cloud. But customers put up with this because it's really, really important to get that complete view of their data. We see this as an opportunity to simplify the lives of our customers and bring together all of their transactional and analytical data in one place centrally without having to move it around in the first place. So that's the crux of the problem that we're trying to solve with Unistore. Unistore is a modern approach to app development, bringing together transactional and analytical data together in a single unified data platform. To enable the transactional component of those workloads, we're adding support for fast single row operations powered by a brand new row store. Having your single data set with all of that data together in one place unlocks new possibilities. You can immediately drive analytics on your operational data and combine it with all of the historical data that already lives inside Snowflake. Part of this vision though that resonates most strongly with most of the customers that I talked to during the private preview that we've had uh, going for the past year is simplicity. This approach allows our customers to simplify their architectures, eliminate data movement and data pipelines, and have a unified approach to governance in one central place. Powering Unistore workloads on Snowflake is a new flagship feature called Hybrid Tables. Hybrid Tables is currently in private preview. The core capability that Hybrid Tables adds to Snowflake is excellent operational query performance and throughput. And that's powered by, again, this brand new row store. But the superpower of Hybrid Tables is that it's just another table type in the one single Snowflake database product. And that's a lofty hand wavy statement. So I'm gonna bring it down to the ground level. In practice, what that means is that you can join a hybrid table and a standard table together, and that executes inside the one Snowflake query engine performantly and efficiently. We don't federate the query execution to a different database that all runs inside your same warehouse. It also shares a transaction system. So you can run atomic transactions across a standard table and a hybrid table and maintain consistency between all of your data in Snowflake. And of course, all the features that you already use with Snowflake are going to work right out of the box. So column masking, row level access policies, all that works with hybrid tables as well. Now there's a lot of additional sub features and nitty gritty details here that we're going to get hands on with in a second. Uh, but first I want to touch briefly on how we're building Unistore to achieve that experience. So this is the Snowflake architecture that you hopefully already know and love. This is kind of our classic three-layer cake diagram. We've got cloud services at the top. 
We have query processing in the middle. That's the virtual warehouses that you use. And then we have storage at the bottom. Um, and standard Snowflake tables are use a column or file format with micro partitions, and it lives in the best in breed object storage on each of the major cloud providers. But columnar storage can't really handle the operational uh, query latency and throughput requirements of a lot of transactional workloads. So to power those Unistore workloads on Snowflake, we built a new operational row store. And you'll see that at the bottom of this diagram, right? We have a different table type down there. And that powers hybrid tables. But also really important here is what didn't change. So that cloud services layer and query processing layer are the same. That means you access your hybrid tables through the same interface and you run queries against hybrid tables on those same warehouses. In order to give you better analytical query performance as well, we also columnarize some of the data. You don't need to worry about managing this. This is all abstracted under a single hybrid table interface. And then whenever you execute a query, we'll decide where to read data from in order to be most performant and efficient for that particular query. Again, all this happens under the hood. So keeping those top two layers the same and changing out the storage engine like this is quite difficult. Uh, we had to deeply optimize the query processing and cloud services layer in order to get you better performance on operational queries. But the magic of Unistore is exactly this, that you can access all of your data through one consistent interface and have a unified experience. Okay, so that's the quick whirlwind tour, the vision of where we're going with Unistore, the feature that we're building, which is hybrid tables, and how we're building this in order to get you that experience. Who wants to see a demo? For this demo, I want you to put yourselves in the headspace of Tasty Bites. Anyone catch the keynote this morning? Cool, all right. We work for Tasty Bites. I'm gonna play the part of a Tasty Bites app developer, and we're gonna build a simple application uh, for our eaters to order food from a Tasty Bites food truck. We'll also build a companion app for our food truck operators to take and fulfill those orders. First thing we're gonna do is build a data model. So our data model for this application is gonna have two core tables. The first is this menu items table. And that's what our food truck operators or chefs are gonna to use to configure the menu for their restaurant. There's a second table, which is an orders table. And that's the table that our eaters are gonna to use to place their orders. And the food truck operators are then gonna to use to go fulfill those orders. If you look closely, you'll notice that this is just a standard Snowflake table. So this is syntax you should already be familiar with. But this is going to be a transactional application with hundreds or thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of eaters, all placing orders at mealtime at various food trucks around a city or country. So we're going to want to use hybrid tables in order to get much better concurrency on those point operations. In order to make this a hybrid table, the first thing we do is we add this hybrid keyword before the table definition. Hybrid tables also require a primary key. And you can use primary keys with standard Snowflake tables, but they don't enforce uniqueness. And they're really important for hybrid tables because they govern how we lay out the data. Hybrid tables also have some additional features. One of the things that hybrid tables allows is additional constraints. So let's imagine that we want to make sure we have no duplicate items in our menu. We can add a unique constraint to this item name attribute, and that'll ensure that we have no duplicate menu items. Let's go and create that table. Okay, menu item table is now live. Let's configure the menu itself. Um, my last name's Coletti. I have some Italian ancestry and I love pasta. So we're gonna lean into that and we'll do uh, an Italian pasta restaurant theme. We'll have two pasta dishes and we will serve tiramisu for dessert. All right, our menu is now configured. Let's move on to the orders table. This one's a bit more tricky, but same theories are gonna apply. We start by making this a hybrid table 
with the hybrid keyword. We're then going to use order key as our primary key. And I'm going to go one step further this time. I don't want to deal with the business logic of having to generate unique primary keys and deal with collisions in my application itself. So we're going to push that down into the database and use an auto incrementing primary key. This item key attribute is also really important. Um, because I've zoomed in, you can't see the menu items table definition anymore, but this attribute is how we map from the order table to the menu item table. We want to make sure that we don't have any orders that reference non-existent menu items, so we can actually formalize this relationship using a foreign key. And then lastly, um, I happen to know that as we go and build a more fully featured workload, that we're going to want to be filtering these orders on uh, timestamps. Maybe to say, just get the orders that were submitted in the last couple of hours. Um, one of the things that hybrid tables also offers is secondary indexes. So we'll add an index to this order date attribute so that we have snappy lookups when we're filtering by time. All right, and let's hope I typed everything right. Boop. Typo. For sits. Okay, good. Let's submit our first order. Now you'll see I've got an error down at the bottom. And in case you can't read that because it's too small, it's a foreign key constraint violation. If you're paying really close attention, you may notice that I've put item key of five. Um, and we're enforcing that foreign key. Uh, and above in our menu, we don't have a menu item number five. So let's fix that. And this time I'll change it to menu item number one, which is spaghetti marinara. Still violated. Oh, I didn't run that. Okay. Thank you. Voila, thank you so much, good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see what we've done. So as you can see, we have that one order. Um, we have the order for me. I ordered the spaghetti marinara, excellent. So what have we done? We now have a, uh, a database backend for this ordering application. We built it. Uh, on Snowflake using hybrid tables for a Unistore workload, and we did that in just a few minutes. Now let's move on and build out uh, the application business logic and the user interface. I'm going to do this using Screamlet, and I'm going to jump to the end here uh, and show you what the app looks like, and then we'll step through the code together. So this is a Streamlit app uh, that's running inside SnowSite. You may have seen this in the keynote yesterday, or you may have seen it in other places, but you can run a Streamlit app inside the Snowflake web UI, and it's a really easy way to get going with Streamlit because you don't need to stand up a local dev environment. You don't need to deal with deploying and hosting those applications. It all just works directly within Snowflake. Uh, let's put an order in, and Mike, I hope you want dessert. Let's get you some tiramisu. Okay, and what this does is this just inserts a new record into that orders table. Mike, I'll call your name when your tiramisu is ready. So really, really simple application. Uh, I'm oversimplifying a bit, but we're, we're short on time. Fortunately though, the, the, the code is about as simple as you'd expect for an application like this. This is 26 lines of Python. Um, there's some boilerplate at the top, then we have these core database interactions in the middle. And what we do here is first, we just retrieve the menu items from our menu item table. And then when I submit an order, what happens is we just parse the data from that input form and then we write the order into uh, the orders table. It's that simple. The UI is really concise because of 
the way that Streamlit works. We basically just have this drop down box with the menu items. And then we have this text input box for your name. That's pretty much it. So as the food truck operator, I want to view those orders coming in. I want to take them off the queue, fire them, plate them, get them into the hands and bellies of my customers as soon as I can. In order to do this, we have, again, that companion app for operators. It's also going to be very simple. Um, it's also a Streamlit and Snowflake app. And all we have is we, we get our view of, of orders here. Um, as soon as I click something or we'll rerun it, you'll see, you'll see orders coming in from customers as well. Um, and we can take an order. Let's take Mike's tiramisu order. And we can start that and move it through the queue. Um, order can go from starting to in progress. And then we can take and plate that order and mark it as complete. So super simple, but functional. Let's look at the code. So a bit more complicated. There's like 60 lines of Python here, um, but we'll walk through it. So again, there's some boilerplate at the top. Then we've got some business logic for the state machine here in the middle. Then again, we have those, those core database interactions with Snowflake. And I want to dwell on this for just a second. Um, I've chosen to use Snowpark Python here because I think the syntax is pretty elegant. Um, but you can interact with Snowflake in whatever way you're comfortable with. You can write SQL. You can use the Snowflake Python connector. Uh, if you like using an ORM like Django, you can do that. We recently announced support for Django as well. Because hybrid tables is just another table type in Snowflake, and because it works seamlessly with all the other Snowflake tables, um, you don't have to change your tool chain at all. You can work with Snowflake using your existing toolkit, your existing frameworks, whatever works best for you and your teams. The UI here at the bottom, there's about 30 lines. Uh, I'm sure that this can be done more concisely if you know what you're doing with Python and Streamlit. This was my first time working with Streamlit, and I did this in a couple of hours, and um, it worked okay for me. All right. So that's going to wrap the building portion of the presentation. Um, I want to quickly like recap what we've what we've seen here. We built a very, very simple uh, backend for this transactional ordering application with hybrid tables as a unistore application in Snowflake. We built a lightweight, functional, but very simple user interface for that ordering application using Streamlit, hosted within Snowflake as a Streamlit in Snowsite app. We also deployed it externally so that folks that don't have a Snowflake login can also get to that application. And this is just scratching the surface, right? One of the things that I didn't show you is the superpower I told you about, um, combining this data with all the data that's already inside Snowflake. But you can imagine in that ordering app, because we're already connected to Snowflake, we could serve up tailored promotions or deals to those users who are ordering in order to drive deeper engagement and loyalty. Or for our food truck operator, we could give them insights about when that lunch rush is going to come based on what historical patterns they see in their business. And this makes for a fun demo, but I'm under no illusion that you're going to go home and start a food truck tech company. Um, so we needed to bring this into the real world and work with customers. Um, we've been doing that. We've been partnering deeply with customers in private preview for the past year now. And I'm really excited that Mike and Christoph are going to come on stage and tell you about the problems that they're solving at Siemens and Northern Trust and how they're building simpler with Unistore. All right. Christoph, I think you're up. Thank you, Phil. Hello, everybody. My name is Christoph Wiesel, and I'm a principal solutions architect with Snowflake Professional Services. For the past two years, I've been working with Siemens to build their Snowflake-powered data mesh platform. Let me start by giving you a little bit of context. Siemens is the largest industrial manufacturing company in Europe. They've got many lines of business, chief among them digital industries, think factory automation and digitization, smart infrastructure, think smart buildings and connected energy grids, and mobility, think trains. Now, 
all of these lines of business have got their own IT teams. So there's a central data platform team that provides the central data platform and infrastructure that they all build upon. And this is where Enrique and I spend most of our time. Now I'm spending, uh, standing in for Enrique today because unfortunately he couldn't be with us. The most important thing for today's session is that the starting point for this data mesh platform is the migration of an on-premise SAP HANA data lake into Snowflake. Now this HANA data lake was primarily fed by data from the SAP ERP systems that Siemens has. So that means we now need to replicate those ERP systems into Snowflake. And that is no mean feat because Siemens is a complex organization. They've got dozens of ERP systems that we need to replicate. Currently, we're replicating 50 ERP systems into Snowflake with about 35,000 tables. And that number of tables is growing quite steadily. On average, these 35,000 tables see 1.5 billion transactions every single day. And we change round about 12,000 tables. And we have got an SLA with a business that the data can uh, be no more than 30 minutes out of date. That means we've got 30 minutes from the time the record changes in the ERP system to that data being available in Snowflake for analysis. And in those 30 minute windows, we touch roughly six to 7,000 tables where we need to bring those changes into Snowflake. Now, because we are running business critical processes on this data, we need to ensure consistency and freshness. The business case for migrating from SAP HANA into Snowflake imposed drastic cost discipline on us. So we took a hard and long look at how we can make these replications efficient. This is what we came up with. We have a process where Siemens are using a tool called SMP Glue that connects to the SAP ERP systems, extracts the changes from the ERP systems, and writes them into a change table in Snowflake. We've got one change table for every source table in the ERP systems. Now, the way that this works is every time we get a new record in the ERP system, we write a record into our change table. If that record changes in the ERP system, we get a new record in the change table with the updated value. And if that record should be deleted at some point, then we get yet another record in the change table. You can imagine this sort of like a stream in Snowflake, not quite, but similar enough. And some of the businesses work directly with these change tables, but most of them, what they really want is just a replica of the table as it exists in the ERP system. So we need to take all of these changes and merge them into our target table. And this is quite a resource intensive process. So we worked with Siemens and identified several patterns in how we can optimize this merge process. And one that we're using is the so-called deferred merge approach, which is what we're showing here on the diagram, where we take the changes from the table and merge them into our target table, but we're running that merge much less frequently than every 30 minutes. Currently, we're running it once about every 24 hours. Now, to still show the business the most recent data, we have got a view on top of the change table and our target table that reconciles all the changes since the last time we merged into our target table so that the business sees the most up-to-date data. And this is a very cost-efficient way to provision up-to-date data to the business. Now we've got a few other patterns that we're using for some special tables. Um, and to orchestrate all of this, Siemens have developed the data ingestion engine, DAI for short. DAI has several tables in Snowflake. The first set of tables configures the whole framework. Which databases do we want to write to? Which tables do we want to use? Uh, what are the primary keys of those tables? Do we have any audit columns? Which merge approach do we want to use? All of that type of information. The next set of tables is the metadata cache. We store the DDL for the tables uh, so that we can react to any schema changes. We also store the DML that the framework generates to merge the data from our change tables into our target tables. The next set of tables is the logging. We log everything that's happening within the framework 
as I mentioned, it's a business critical process. So we need to make sure that we know at all times exactly what is going on with our framework. And then last, but certainly not least, we're also keeping the workflow state in Snowflake. Because one thing that we cannot afford with these, afford with these merges is overlapping merges. We cannot launch a merge, the previous merge has not yet finished. You can imagine this a little bit like the app that Philip was just showing us where he was clicking the orders through its individual states. So a very simple state machine, really. And that is what we're doing here as well. There is a companion framework to Dai, which we call Snowstorm, which reads the DML from the configuration tables and launches them in parallel asynchronously against Snowflake. So you can imagine that every 30 minutes we unleash six to 7,000 queries upon Snowflake to put, operate on our data. When we began, we built the framework using standard Snowflake tables, but we quite quickly ran into an issue. Because with standard Snowflake tables, if a transaction locks the table, we can have no more than 20 statements waiting on that lock to be released. If we have more than 20 queries waiting on the log, all the additional queries will error out with an error message. And at the scale that I was just mentioning, this was quite quickly leading to problems. So what we did is we switched over to hybrid tables because hybrid tables use row level locking. And that means we're not locking the entire table for the, all other transactions, but just the rows that we're actually operating upon. And so we can now happily run our thousands of queries uh, and they can work in parallel. We're not getting locked out anymore. The second big benefit that we're getting from hybrid tables is data consistency. With standard Snowflake tables, we already have primary and foreign keys. And as Philip was mentioned, they are not really enforced today. But with the hybrid tables, they are being enforced as we saw in the demo. And this has really saved us several times while operating this framework. Because when somebody wants to make a change manually, to the workflow configuration, uh, they are seeing errors if they are not being consistent in that configuration, uh, which saves us with the framework because we stay in a data consistent state. And one advantage that we have not yet implemented or will be working towards is changing the way that we store the workflow state. Right now, we are storing the workflow state using an event sourcing pattern. That means every change to the state is stored as an individual append to the workflow state, which works quite well with regular Snowflake tables. But in the future, we can now change this over to actually updating the records in these tables so that we can be much more efficient in how we manage our workflow state. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mike Susanto from the Northern Trust. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Susanto. I'm an SVP at Northern Trusts, and I'm currently uh, the head of Omnium Asset Servicing Technology and chief architect for As Northern Trust Asset Servicing. For folks who don't know, uh, Northern Trust is a well-established 130-year-old global institution headquartered in Chicago. We're a leading provider of wealth management, asset management, and asset servicing for large institutional investors and high net worth clients. The Omnium platform resides within the asset servicing arm of Northern Trust, and is built from the ground up. It's a real-time middle back office platform that allows our customers to get their investment book of records, also known as an IBOR, data in real time. Recently, we introduced a new uh, Snowflake product offering for, the Omni for our Omnium customers to essentially access their IBOR data vault data directly uh, in Snowflake via Snowflake private listing. During our Snowflake journey, we actually discovered that we have some operational workload use cases that don't play well with traditional Snowflake uh, tables. So we seeked out some help from our Snowflake account team uh, to see if there's any potential solutions that Snowflake can help us out with. They introduced us to Carl and Philip from the Unisor team, and we discussed with them uh, our, our current um, challenges that we have. And essentially, we narrowed it down to two use cases uh, to use uh, Unisor for. So the first use case is essentially the, the data vault uh, metadata management for ingestion of data. Uh, so it is a similar use case as, as the Siemens that you just heard. The second use case is our data vault 
bookmarking, which is our main product feature that we have of operational workloads and, and data store that we've integrated into Snowflake. Our bookmarking feature allows our downstream systems and customers to essentially track the knowledge date used for a given data product in, in order to produce a consistent point in time data set. So we built various store procedures and REST APIs uh, around the bookmark hybrid tables for use with, with our downstream consumers. So we had some challenges during our initial implementation of the bookmark feature. So these limitations uh, using bookmarks on top of uh, Snowflake tables, essentially some of them were merge statements, right? So when, we, when we're doing these merge statements uh, with high volume and the, they updated with zero rows, we are still locking the table uh, in long running transactions. We also encountered errors uh, when we're trying to write more than 20 concurrent uh, inserts at, at a time. So when that occurs, you have to call your Snowflake representatives to actually bump up this concurrency level. So we bumped it up to 90 and this helped initially, but we still faced issues down the line, right? So we also faced duplicate bookmarks that were created in our tables since there's no primary key to force uniqueness. We, we faced high latency with, with when we were doing high concurrency with high volume uh, of, of volume of uh, bookmark creation updates. And because of these limitations, we were actually forced to uh, move the queuing and serialization logic into the app layer and outside of Snowflake as a workaround. Uh, once we were able to use the, the hybrid tables, however, we saw the following advantages. So we were right away able to eliminate the duplicates as we're able to use a primary key to force uniqueness, we are able to improve performance considerable amount by eliminating the serialization and, and writes of the queuing uh, that, that reduced the, the, the latency of the bookmark creations that we had to remove our, our, our workarounds. And finally, we we're able to eliminate the warehouses that we had to spin up just for our workaround queuing solution. So that saved us some money there. As I mentioned earlier, our bookmarking feature allows downstream systems and customers to track their knowledge date used given for a data product in order to produce a consistent point in time data set. So this is our typical workflow. So customers would essentially submit the API into their API service, the bookmark that they want. So that would be either like a start of day, end of day, or even a downstream uh, service provider, the client and the reporting date. We would then look up into the hybrid table to get the latest versions for that bookmark in requested. And the API service would adjust the data to make, uh, to make logical changes to be, to, to be pulled from the, the hybrid tables. We pass this information into our create or update bookmark store procedure as a JSON string. The store procedure will then materialize uh, the JSON string from the API into temp tables. We will then execute the merge directly onto the, the hybrid tables uh, via the temp tables. And then in addition to that, we would also insert a record into our history table, bookmark history table, which is a normal Snowflake table, which we would private list directly to our clients as part of our offering. So then our clients are able to use that information for our bookmarking feature in order to get a consistent point in time query for our data product. So as you can see, we're able to use both hybrid tables and regular Snowflake tables to solve real world business use cases. Thank you everyone for listening to Northern Trust Journey to for Unistore. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Christoph, for coming up here and sharing those stories. I think one of the things that I, I hope you all took away from this is you see those architecture diagrams up there, right? And it's not just like one big hybrid table. There's it's hybrid tables are one part of a much bigger picture of the Snowflake data cloud and data platform. And its superpower again is how deeply integrated it is into that platform. It's really another tool in your Snowflake toolkit that's going to allow you to solve a broader set of problems and bring new diverse workloads into Snowflake. In addition to Siemens and Northern Trust, we partnered with a bunch of additional customers during our private preview. These are a few of the customers that we've been working closely with, gathering their feedback, making sure that the product that we're building is going to be really useful in solving the problems that they face in their business. This is a short session. We can only cram so much content in here and we wanted to do a demo as well. 
So we didn't spend as much time on context and problems and architecture as maybe we would have wanted. In case you do want to learn more, there are additional resources for you on the web. So we have an ebook and a launch blog, which are good text resources you can read. We've also got a bunch of videos. So there's a demo, a short workload explainer, and some content on Unistore and native apps together. Also, we're going to be continuing the private preview for a while. So if you want to get involved, please do let your account rep know. And then we can make sure we'll get in touch when we add additional customers into the preview in the future. All right. Uh, a heartfelt thank you from me to you for, for spending some time and learning about Unistore today. Thank you.